Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the case of Lisa Montgomery? Montgomery was executed on January 13, 2021 by the federal government of the United States for the 2004 murder of Bobby Joe Stinnett. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background of Lisa Montgomery. I'll move to the timeline of the crime, and then I'll look at the mental health and personality factors. Lisa Marie Montgomery was born in Melvern, Kansas on February 27, 1968. She was maltreated by her stepfather, his friends, and her mother for many years. Montgomery was married twice. The first time was when she was 18. Both of those marriages would involve maltreatment. Montgomery would have four children from 1987 to 1990, three daughters and a son. In 1990, Montgomery had a tubal ligation. After this, she claimed to be pregnant several times. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. Montgomery expressed an interest in buying a dog from a 23-year-old woman named Bobby Jo Stinnett, who ran a dog breeding business from her house in Skidmore, Missouri. Stinnett was eight months pregnant. The two had communicated online to arrange this purchase. Montgomery was using a fake name. On December 16, 2004, Montgomery made her way to the residence of Bobby Joe Stinnett, strangled her with a rope, then used a kitchen knife to cut her unborn child from her womb. Montgomery took the infant, drove back to Kansas, and would pretend that she was the mother of the child. About an hour after the murder, Stinnett's mother discovered her and called the authorities. Stinnett would be taken to a nearby hospital where she was pronounced dead. The police were able to find Montgomery in part because of the online communication that occurred between Montgomery and her victim. She was arrested in Kansas the next day, December 17. The infant was recovered and placed in the custody of her father. Because this crime involved a kidnapping, Montgomery was charged with a federal offense, kidnapping resulting in death. Montgomery's attorneys attempted to mount an insanity defense. They were not successful. Montgomery would be found guilty on October 22, 2007. The jury recommended that Montgomery be sentenced to death, which the judge would do on April 4, 2008. Montgomery was executed on January 13, 2021 in Terre Haute, Indiana. She was 52 years old. The federal government of the United States has only executed three other women in all of U.S. history, one in 1865 and two in 1953. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. Montgomery was born with brain damage. Her mother had bipolar disorder and drank heavily when she was pregnant with Montgomery. It was reported that her biological father was also addicted to alcohol. Montgomery had a significant history of trauma. She was the victim of abuse of a physical, verbal, and sexual nature. Her stepfather, his friends, her mother, and men that her mother invited into the house repeatedly harmed Montgomery over the course of years. It was one of the worst trauma histories that many of the professionals dealing with the case had ever seen. It is almost impossible to imagine that she would not have developed something like PTSD. In addition to the mental health disorders, she also sustained a number of head injuries. She would be diagnosed with epilepsy. Several months before the crimes, Montgomery was treated by a mental health counselor. This was the first time she was treated by a mental health professional in her life. The counselor diagnosed her with depression and also indicated that her functioning was impaired. At her trial, her defense made a number of arguments based on mental health. Mental health professionals said that she had borderline personality disorder, PTSD, depression, and they said she was suffering from a condition called pseudocysis, otherwise known as false pregnancy. This is a condition where a woman believes she is pregnant when she is not. It is associated with various hormonal changes that simulate pregnancy. 
The experts said that Montgomery had hallucinations and delusions. For example, she believed that God would speak to her through connect-the-dot puzzles. When Montgomery was young, her mother went to counseling. The notes indicate that Montgomery's mother was narcissistic and had a lack of empathy for Montgomery. After Montgomery was convicted, the only real issue for her appeal had to do with whether she fully understood the death penalty. It wasn't really about her state of mind at the time she committed the crimes. Mental health professionals at the prison said that Montgomery was psychotic and dissociating. They also said she had bipolar disorder and PTSD. Montgomery was on antipsychotic medication starting in 2008, but it didn't really help her too much. At the time of the murder, Montgomery was leading family and friends to believe that she was pregnant. Her second husband knew that this was unlikely. He was aware of the tubal ligation in 1990. It is believed that Montgomery wanted to acquire an infant because her ex-husband had figured out that she was lying about being pregnant. Montgomery thought that he was going to try to use that information to get custody of two of her four children during a court appearance that was coming up soon. So the prosecution put together this theory of the crime that said that Montgomery was feeling this pressure, and this is why she went and committed the crime, that she had premeditated it, which seems pretty clear, but also that her motive was based on this idea of not losing custody of her children. The motive didn't have anything to do with psychosis like hallucinations or delusions. The prosecution claimed that Montgomery was faking her mental health symptoms, which seems like a fairly extraordinary claim considering her history of trauma. They dismissed her traumatic experiences. They used the term abuse excuse in their closing arguments. They highlighted how Montgomery was an unfit mother, saying that she didn't cook or clean and that her house was filthy. The defense never really connected what happened to Montgomery with her current behavior. They certainly covered the trauma. They said what happened, but they never really explained it. The jury would never see multiple scans of Montgomery's brain showing tissue loss and other abnormalities. This was excluded by the court. The defense did try to get this information admitted. One of the defense expert witnesses who testified about the pseudocysis didn't actually have a license. She wasn't a licensed mental health professional of any type, and she had no special experience in that condition. There was also an unusual interpersonal issue on the defense team. One of Montgomery's attorneys was allegedly misogynistic and reportedly had some problem with another attorney on the team named Judy Clark. Now, Clark is considered to be an exceptional death penalty attorney. She worked on a number of high-profile cases like the Ted Kaczynski case and the Jared Loeffner case. The male attorney was able to get Clark dismissed from the case. He reportedly described her as bossy and emasculating. Now, it's hard to know what really happened between these attorneys, but it amazes me that they can't put aside their differences when they are defending somebody's life. After Montgomery's conviction, she expressed remorse for her crime and accepted full responsibility. So this brings us to this question. Could Montgomery's traumatic experiences have explained her behavior? Montgomery's behavior was heinous and unacceptable. She should have remained in prison for the rest of her life, if for no other reason, to keep society safe. At the same time, I think it's important to acknowledge that her trauma could have absolutely explained her behavior. It's almost like the people that harmed her were trying to construct a killer. She was programmed to cause destruction. I think what happened in Montgomery's case is that she committed a crime that caused so much outrage that mounting a defense became challenging. Many people lose the will to fight for somebody who perpetrated these types of crimes. People struggle to see the reason such a crime would be committed. They view the perpetrator as a monster, as sadistic, when really the cognitive and affective processes are more likely to be based on the perpetrator's own traumatic experiences. If she had simply strangled somebody and that was it, the outcome probably would have been much different. She would probably be in prison for life instead of dead. Montgomery suffered terribly her entire life. Her actions, in turn, caused more suffering. It's a vicious cycle that proves difficult to break. Several mental health professionals and attorneys advocated 
to the courts for Montgomery. They wanted to spare her life, but they were not successful in that goal, and they failed to educate the criminal justice system about the consequences of trauma. Those are my thoughts on the Lisa Montgomery case. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.